We do have a interesting story for you out of AL.com. Now, this is an opinion column, so it's it's not, you know, a, an attempt at objective journalism, so I did want to go ahead and throw that out here. It's a article by a guy named Roy S. Johnson. If you've read a whole bunch of AL.com's opinion pieces, his name comes up quite a bit. He's done a lot of writing for them. He's a regular columnist, so... You're probably familiar with his work, and he does happen to be black, which I normally don't mention. It's just it happens to be relevant because he talks a lot about that in this particular piece. But here's the headline to this. It has to do with the VP pick from yesterday. Kamala Harris may be blacker than you. Well, she's certainly blacker than me. <laughs> I think that anybody, <laughs> considering I'm whiter than sour cream, I think that uh, that would be a, a fair assessment for me. <laughs> But uh, as usual, Roy S. Johnson, most of it's drivel, and he starts actually picking it up and, and getting to the thrust of his story, you know, way down almost past the first page of his article. So th this is where his article really starts taking off. Basically, the gist of it is that he's upset that there are some people that are suggesting that Kamala Harris is not black enough, and this is where he goes with this. Black people have variously challenged my black card, even though I couldn't leave home without it. In my youth, mostly because of my diction, mom, a teacher, did not tolerate Ebonics even before there was Ebonics, and affinity for good grades. Later, I'd get the racial side eye when I, uh, excuse me, when it was learned, I spoke a little French, knew how to swim, didn't think all white people were racist and wasn't at all intimidated by white people. Which I think is slightly racist because it suggests that the vast majority of black people are intimidated by white people, which I've not been my experience in my interactions with you know, really any of them, to be perfectly honest. I've never even heard of that, so that's interesting. And then he continues on. When it was discovered I really liked basketball, some folks wanted to slice up my car, uh, slice up my card, or sorry, man, I can't read today, I, my, you know, when it was discovered I really sucked at basketball, some folks wanted to slice up my card like it had expired, it's ridiculous of course, infuriating, it's dumb, dumb as the paper bag test we used so long ago to discriminate against each other, dumb and heinous as the historic origins of that test, the raping of black enslaved women by white slave owners, which led to the delineation between house, I'm just quoting the article here, don't get mad at me, YouTube, Negroes and field Negroes, which led to, you can't stop me if you've heard this, the insidious paper bag test, which fed generations of internal borgerous discrimination of my darker skinned brothers and sisters by my lighter skinned brothers and sisters. Dumb is the one-drop rule in a law in 10 states, yes, including Alabama, in the early 20th century uh, that held if just one of your ancestors was black, you were black, period. Eight other states had a blood fraction rules defining blackness as having a, as little as one-sixteenth black blood in your veins, hence one drop. Now, and for too long, some of us want to fight about it want to evaluate, substantiate, and validate the blackness of other black people. You know what's so funny about this? I actually agree. I agree with the main thrust of what he just said there. Now, I, I agree with Roy Johnson on pretty much nothing. Just about every word that he writes, at least with, you know, your John Archibalds or your Kyle Whitmires, I'll occasionally be like, okay, he makes a good point there. Even if I don't totally agree, I see where he's going. Roy Johnson, I pretty much never agree with anything that he says. But this makes total sense to me. The thrust of what he is saying here, I can totally get on board with, which is we should not be judging people based on the color of their skin. More importantly, that doing some kind of weird self-evaluation of how black somebody is is just a waste of time and it's dumb. And the same thing would be true if we were trying to make a test of how white a person is. I mean, other than like the goofy, funny uh, internet polls that I've taken some of them and they say that I'm not that white, which I contend means that the poll is completely wrong. 
<laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm like the whitest guy on earth. I can't jump or any of that. <laughs> it's just the whole thing. But I don't know, just reading this, gauging a person's blackness, just like gauging their ness when it comes to any other race, is just dumb. And I agree with it the whole sentiment that all this stuff is ridiculous and, and why are we worried about this stupid garbage? It's a giant waste of time. I'm right there with him on this. Unfortunately, this is not the position he retains, not just in other papers or other things that he's been written. Let's just look a few paragraphs down and he completely contradicts himself. So this is further down in that very same article. Today, pretty much every black person is mixed with something. I have Native American lineage, and that's cool. Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, you already got more than Elizabeth Warren. Then. <laughs> uh, that's that's common in Alabama. Just about everybody, black, white, whatever. You've, you've probably got at least some Native American in you. I've got a little bit in me. I don't know exactly how much. I can guarantee it's more than Elizabeth Warren. Until, <laughs> I'm sorry, he continues on. Until, well, to some, it isn't. To some who want to whine and rant that Kamala Harris isn't black for some reason, maybe because the vice presidential Democrat nominee's mother is Indian, uh, in parentheses South Asian, I don't get the distinction there, and her father is Jamaican, or maybe because of ignorance. Harris was born in Oakland, California, America, check, one of the blackest cities in America, check, although, and by the way, I'm, I'm not adding the checks, he's saying the checks. Although her parents split when she was five, Harris and her baby sister, Maya, were often dragged to local civil rights marches and serenaded at home, reported by the BBC, as their Hindu mother sang along with the soulful likes of Aretha Franklin and her father spun jazz vinyls like John Coltrane and Theo, uh, Theonius Monk, Black, Czech. The two girls sang in the children's choir at the 23rd Avenue Church of God in Oakland, a black church, check. Harris attended Howard University, a crown jewel among historically black colleges and universities. She is joined by, uh, she joined Alpha Kappa Alpha, Incorporated, the first black sorority, check. By some measures, Harris may be blacker than some black folks who doubt their blackness. But a few paragraphs ago, none of that stuff was supposed to matter, right? Like, gauging how black a person was, was an exercise in futility. I thought, I mean, I thought you were making the case that all of this junk is a waste of time and we shouldn't be concerned with how black somebody is or how white somebody is, that this is something that just doesn't matter. And it shouldn't. I agreed with that. So why are you wasting all your time trying to make the case that Kamala Harris is really black? Because... I don't see really any of those things that make a person really black because I don't see that as necessarily being a thing. I mean, there are white people that like John Coltrane. There's black people that like Michael Jackson, a white artist. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Um, but that's, I don't, I don't get that. I, this whole identity politics thing is just so ridiculous and pointless. Like, would Kamala Harris be less black if she grew up in a white neighborhood in Iowa and went to, I don't know, Northwestern University, would she be not black then? See, he, he tries to make the case that none of that stuff should matter, that she should be judged based on her merit, and then he does a complete 180 and goes, but she has all these black things in her history, and she may even be blacker than some of the black people reading this article. Well, you gotta pick a camp. Like, either blackness is really important or it's not. And defining blackness as going to historically black schools or uh, engaging in quote-unquote black activities, uh, what if she had sung in the choir in a white church? Would that make Kamala Harris less of a black person? Now, granted, she's just as much Indian as she is black, so I don't know exactly how that shakes out, and I'm talking about it, of course, in, in the genetic sense, but I, I just don't understand this mentality. I think of people as being individuals, and their activities don't make them whiter or blacker or anything. That's just a, a thing that is fixed that you can't change. That's your genes. It, none of this really makes any sense to me. I mean, uh, just a 
like what six paragraphs ago he was talking about anybody that tries to gauge somebody's blackness as discrimination that's the way he phrased it i didn't he said that they were using it as a way to discriminate against other black people and then he goes into this long tirade about how when you do gauge Kamala Harris's black, uh, blackness that she's blacker than everybody else. Well, aren't you just engaging in the same behavior that you in this same article said was wrong and was used to discriminate against other black people? Dude, pick a side, man. Like, have some level of consistency here. And then he finishes out the article this way. Quote, this is a diversion, an effort to depress the black vote and women, added Lewis Maddox. If we get caught up, she paused to breathe. Our responsibility at this point as black folks is to do whatever we can to ensure as many black folks show up at the polls in November 3rd, period. All right, well, if what she is suggesting, in other words, the reason that people are questioning whether or not Kamala Harris is really black or not is some kind of attempt to get pe black people to not show up to the polls and that, you know, the value of Kamala Harris being on the ticket with Joe Biden should encourage people getting out the black vote. I'm sorry, there's just nothing to that. And I'm not saying this because I'm in any way questioning whether or not Kamala Harris is really black or not. What I'm questioning is whether or not she has any rapport with black voters, and I mean, like, whatsoever. Joe Biden does not need help getting the black vote. Joe Biden already has the black vote. Granted, any Democrat already automatically, because they have a D behind their name, has an edge with black voters because they tend to vote overwhelmingly in favor of Democrats. However, even if that were not the case, even among Democrats in Democratic circles, Joe Biden does very well amongst black voters. Maybe take a look at this graph real quick. This is from a poll, a survey that was taken by YouGov in November 2019. This was back when Kamala Harris was actually still in the race. And you can see there, I've highlighted the demographics and how they break down on their preferred candidate. When it comes to, quote unquote, the black vote, Joe Biden's got 47%. The next two people that are tied for second when it comes to quote unquote the black vote are Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders who each have 12%. Even combined, they barely have half of the black vote that Joe Biden does. Joe Biden does not need help in this particular sphere of influence. Now, how much of the black vote did Kamala Harris get? 4%. Tulsi Gabbard got three. The idea that Kamala Harris is somehow helping Joe Biden with the black vote is absurd. If anything, she's hurting him. I mean, that's a crushing victory by any rubric that you could use in the political sphere. Joe Biden is destroying everybody else when it comes to who black voters prefer. And Kamala Harris can barely get 4%, barely eking out Tulsi Gabbard. And look at that. Elizabeth Warren? Elizabeth Warren is one of the whitest human beings on planet Earth. And we can say that definitively because we've seen her 23 and me. <laughs> she is one of the whitest people to have ever existed. And she was getting three times the amount of black people voting for her than Kamala Harris. Maybe what is going on here, and this is funny because I'm giving, actually, interestingly enough, black people more credit than Roy Johnson is. Maybe black people don't just see, that's a black person. I'm voting for them. Doesn't work that way. Maybe black people actually are voting who they perceive as being the person that most aligns with them, you know, whether or not they actually do or not is a different story. But, you know, like white voters, they vote for the person that they perceive as being the best one for the job. That they don't just see a person with a black skin and think, I have to vote for that person. It's interesting that Roy Johnson seems to think that black people are just going to press the button or pull the lever for anybody that happens to be on the ticket or as long as the ticket has somebody with black skin on it. And by suggesting that she's not really black, they might be like, well, maybe we shouldn't vote for her if she's not really black. 
I tend to think that black people are smarter than that. I guess Roy Johnson doesn't. I mean, for Pete's sake, there were 8% of black voters in that poll that were undecided. There were more black people in that poll that said, I'm not sure who to vote for or would vote for nobody rather than vote for Kamala Harris. She simply, for whatever reason, does not, and I could go into the reasons I think that, that actually she doesn't do very well with the black voters, but the point is, the, the idea that her blackness is on trial and the fact that some people don't think she's black might be a deterrent from black people turning out and voting, Joe Biden does not need help with that. Joe Biden will be just fine. And I think that it's pretty darn racist to suggest that black voters might see that, oh, there's not a black person on the ticket. I don't think that we should go out and vote. Joe Biden's doing fine in that realm. I may not like that they all want to vote for Joe Biden, but that is the way that the math shakes out. <sighs> What's funny about this whole thing, though, is Roy Johnson completely misses why people on the right are pointing out that Kamala Harris isn't really black. And it's almost always done tongue-in-cheek. Nobody's really serious about it. Look, nobody on the right actually legitimately cares whether or not Kamala Harris is really black or not. We don't. We think of people as individuals. We don't think of them as a list of check marks that they can pop off on how many of the oppressed classes I can claim for my own. That's not how people on the right think. Never has been. We think of people as individuals that should be rewarded based on their merits and ideas, not the color of their skin or what's in their pants or any of the other things that seem to be super important to Democrats right now. I mean, Joe Biden literally said that he, had, he was going to pick somebody that was black and female. Well, that means that the most important qualification for the job was not, would they be a good vice president? Would they be able to step up to the role of president if, you know, it called upon that? Are they going to follow the Constitution? Throw all that out the window. Uh, do they have black skin and do they have the right set of genitals? Apparently, that's the biggest qualification to Joe Biden. But people on the right don't think about that. The reason we're poking fun of you Democrats for caring about that stupid crap is because it's really important to you, so much so that it's the most important qualification when it comes to picking a running mate. And even in doing that, you pick somebody that, you know, may not be as black as some people think of, like somebody that actually came from Africa. And the funniest thing about all of this is that Kamala Harris also happens to be a person that slept her way to the top with Wooly Brown and also is the, I believe, great-granddaughter or great-granddaughter of a slaveholder in Jamaica. Now, again, I don't think that you should be held responsible for or that you carry over any kind of racial guilt because of what your great-grandparents did. I don't believe that. I think it's ridiculous to hold somebody to that standard. But the point is the left does, and that's why we point stuff like that out. For example, if I point out that a Jewish person is not acting... Uh, consistently with their beliefs because they're sitting there eating a bacon cheeseburger. I'm not saying that I believe eating bacon cheeseburgers are immoral. I am pointing out that he is not being consistent with his own stated ideology. That's what I'm doing there, and this is what is happening with people on the right when they're saying, hey, Kamala Harris isn't really black. They're poking fun at the ridiculous standard that the left has set up for itself. That's what's going on here. And it goes completely over Roy Johnson's head, who actually surprisingly manages to make some pretty darn racist statements in his attempt to explain that Kamala Harris actually is black. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.